Tonight, several developing stories as we come on the air. The new surveillance tonight after that oil tanker was set ablaze. These images, a U.S. surveillance plane capturing what the White House now claims shows the Iranian National Guard removing the evidence. What the president is now saying tonight and why some of our allies are saying they're not convinced yet. Also tonight, the war of words escalating this evening between President Trump and Joe Biden. What the president told George about Biden and ABC News tonight obtaining internal polling from the Trump campaign. What it shows about a potential matchup between Trump and Biden in 2020. Tonight, another American tourist dead in the Dominican Republic. A woman dying just one day after her 53rd birthday. What happened this time and what her son is saying tonight. The terrifying moment the firefighter killed after helping to revive a man from a suspected overdose. The danger on the front lines in America. The shark attack on the coast we hear from the 17-year-old victim tonight. The description, her father seeing the shark up close, fighting the shark off. We're also watching severe storms and the threat in the east on Father's Day. The Cuba Gooding Jr. case and tonight the new surveillance right here, what you can see. The stingray scare after we reported 15 stung. Tonight, 12 others stung on the coast. And America Strong, what happened when I set out to ask, why is your dad the best dad? You've got to hear this. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a very busy Friday night. And we begin tonight with that new surveillance and rising tensions between the U.S. and Iran. President Trump pointing the finger at Tehran for attacking two oil tankers, insisting the attack has, quote, Iran written all over it. U.S. Central Command releasing this new surveillance video, claiming it shows an Iranian Revolutionary Guard patrol boat recovering an unexploded mine from one of the tankers. Emergency crews finally putting out that massive fire on that Norwegian ship. Iran is pushing back tonight, accusing the U.S. of sabotage diplomacy. ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, leading us off. It was just nine hours after the ships were attacked that a U.S. P-8 surveillance plane recorded these videos of what the military says is an Iranian Revolutionary Guard patrol boat pulling alongside one of the crippled tankers. You see men reaching up to the ship's hull to remove what the U.S. says was an unexploded mine. Just before that video was recorded, there was this image where you see on the right side of the ship what is believed believed to be that mine, and on the left, the damage caused by the magnetic mine that did detonate. Evidence that President Trump told Fox News in a phone interview today that proves Iran was behind the attacks. Well, Iran did do it. I guess one of the mines didn't explode, and it's probably got essentially Iran written all over it, and that was their boat, and they didn't want the evidence left behind. But the U.S. has not yet publicly released any evidence showing Iran placed the mines on the tankers, one of which was burning for hours. The German foreign minister today saying the video is not sufficient proof Iran is to blame. We obviously need to make contingency plans should the situation deteriorate. But we also need to broaden our support for this international situation. As for the crew who were aboard the tankers, one crew remains in Iran, reluctantly. The other is back on the tanker, which sustained less damage. So let's get to Martha Raddatz. She's with us live tonight. And Martha, the White House, of course, pointing to this video tonight. The Iranians, though, are denying any involvement. But if this is Iran, why would they do this? Wouldn't they know the U.S. has significant uh, surveillance capability in the region? Uh, they sure should, David, but whoever hit those boats did it to cause disruption, not destruction, no oil spills, no one was hurt, but it could drive up oil prices, which would benefit Iran. All of it, David, a very dangerous game. You'll continue to follow it into the weekend, Martha. Thank you. Meantime, the war of words escalating tonight between President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. This evening here, more of our exclusive. For the first time, what President Trump told our George Stephanopoulos about Biden. And this evening here, ABC News has now obtained internal polling from the Trump campaign. What it shows about a potential matchup between Trump and Biden in 2020. ABC's senior national correspondent, Terry Moran, at the White House tonight. With several polls that show him struggling in key states, President Trump insists his own campaign polls tell a very different story, even phoning his campaign manager to back him up. But I just had a meeting with somebody that's a pollster, and I'm winning everywhere. Okay, so hold he, it off for a little while. Just call Brad on the phone. 
After that call, the president doubled down, insisting his polls, in fact, show him winning. But today, ABC News obtained some of the Trump campaign's internal polling from back in March, which showed the president trailing Joe Biden in three key states, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Florida. Campaign manager Brad Parscale calls those numbers ancient, saying, since then, we have seen huge swings in the president's favor. But it's clear Trump is laser-focused on the former vice president. You know, he wanted to be the tough guy. He's not a tough guy. He's a weak guy, but he wanted to be the tough guy. Trump is trying to exploit what he says are Biden's recent shifts in long-held positions on federal funding for abortion and whether China is a threat to the U.S. He is recalibrated on everything. He's... Everything he says, he's taken back two weeks later because he's getting slammed by the left. And he's stuck with this stuff. I mean, he's really stuck with it. Today, Biden is slamming Trump on the president's stunning admission to George that if offered political dirt from the Kremlin or other adversaries... I think I'd take it. If I thought there was something wrong, I'd go maybe to the FBI if I thought there was something wrong. Biden today signing a pledge that he'd never do this. Donald Trump doesn't think it matters if candidates for presidency accept damaging information on other opponents from foreign governments. I believe he's dead wrong. So let's get to Terry Moran. He's live at the White House tonight. And Terry, President Trump telling George he would maybe call the FBI if he was offered dirt on an opponent by a foreign government. Uh, but today it seemed he was saying something a little different. Very different, David. With George, he kind of scoffed at the idea that he'd go to the FBI if the Kremlin or another foreign government offered him dirt uh, today on Fox. And about face, he said he'd absolutely go to the FBI, but he'd have to listen to it first to see what it was. David? Terry Moran, thank you. This was incredible access to the president, and you can see George's full interview, President Trump, 30 hours. It airs Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on ABC. But we move on tonight into yet another death in the Dominican Republic, this time a mother from New York City found dead in her hotel room a day after her 53rd birthday. Authorities believe she suffered a heart attack and what her son is now demanding tonight. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. Tonight, the State Department monitors yet another investigation of an American tourist who died in the Dominican Republic and whose family is asking questions. Just a day after her 53rd birthday, Layla Cox, a radiologist from New York, died from what officials say was a heart attack, but her son claims she was healthy. It's been a nonstop nightmare, just trying to get her body and her remains back, trying to get answers. This after at least eight American deaths in the last 12 months at different resorts across the island. Families all around America asking questions. Nobody can give me a solid answer on how she passed away. Everything is being misdirected and misskewed. Um, I get new information every single day. It was just two weeks ago when Nathaniel Holmes and Cynthia Day, seen here kayaking on the island, were both found dead in a DR resort. Autopsies performed on the island said they died of respiratory failure and pulmonary edema. The husband of Miranda Werner says she died after drinking from a mini bar in her room. He and the relatives of Nathaniel Holmes and Cynthia Day now wait for toxicology results. Officials there saying there is no evidence so far that the deaths are connected and are urging tourists not to rush to judgment while these investigations unfold. And, David, more than 2.7 million American tourists visited the island last year. The Ministry of Tourism there says it is working with hotels to reinforce safety conditions and that it is working closely with authorities to get these families some answers. David. Gio, thank you. Now to the danger on the front lines in this country. A deadly and chaotic scene in Wisconsin. A firefighter was shot and killed by the man he was trying to help. Newly released body cam video tonight showing the man was revived from a suspected drug overdose, arguing about going to the hospital when he suddenly pulled that gun. Here's ABC's Ariel Reshef. Tonight, newly released body camera video capturing that deadly encounter in Wisconsin. Oh, oh, oh. It started on a bus. Paramedics reviving Reuben Houston with Narcan for a suspected overdose. Moments later, officers repeatedly urging him to go to the hospital. Do you need weapons on you? No, sir. Okay. You kind of have a bulge on your right side. That's my phone. Okay, don't reach for anything. Just kind of That's my phone? Well, I don't oh. want... Look, man, I have a problem with officers touching me. Look, this is my... In a split second, that man reaching for his gun and opening fire. Houston killing firefighter Mitch Longard and injuring another officer. I'm hit low. I'm bleeding. 
The man then taking a hostage who was struck by a stray bullet. The suspect gunned down by police, dying at the hospital. The officer's actions demonstrated what is meant when you hear the words, the thin blue line, the thin red line. David, the district attorney said those officers who used deadly force were justified. The police chief saying they acted heroically. David. They did, Ariel. Thank you. And next tonight, we're now hearing from the high school student surviving a shark attack in North Carolina, losing part of her leg. Her father coming to the rescue, saying he hit the shark with everything he could. Here's ABC's Victor Akendo tonight. Tonight, true grit from the teenager who lost her leg in that shark attack in North Carolina. When I was in that water, I was like praying. I'm like, I'm 17. I got so much to do. <laughs> a determined Paige Winter speaking out for the first time in this hospital video. I'm going to be able to walk, I'm going to be able to write, I'm going to be able to do just kind of like everything. But that day, Paige came close to dying. She's in bad shape. I mean, it's, her leg is almost gone. Her father, a paramedic firefighter today, describing how she disappeared in an instant. I dove under and I grabbed her. And when I pulled her up, a shark came up with her. And I had a big, just a big eye just staring at you. And I hit it with everything I could and it let go. Paige rushed to shore and airlifted to the hospital with deep lacerations. Her leg amputated above the knee. And the shark took her leg, uh, but it did not take her spirit. And tonight, Paige with her own message. I think I could transform this into something good for me and good for sharks and good for the environment too. Paige also lost fingers in the attack, but doctors say her surgeries were successful. She's expected to get out of the hospital next week. David, wow, a remarkable and brave young woman. Victor, thank you. Now to the severe thunderstorm threat heading into Father's Day weekend. Dangerous weather possible actually from Texas all the way up to the Great Lakes and over to the East Coast. A confirmed EF1 tornado touching down in Winona, New Jersey in the past 24 hours. Winds up to 100 miles per hour. Surveillance also showing another tornado tearing across a backyard. This was in Mullica Hill, New Jersey. So let's get right to Rob Marciano tonight because everyone wants to know how Father's Day weekend is going to go. And you're watching some trouble spots, Rob. Well, we're going to get rain here by the end of the weekend, David, but the focus for the extreme weather is in the Midwest. We've got a couple of watches up right now, a big one actually across the high plains of Kansas and Colorado. There you see it, big hail, some big winds, tornadoes possible, and this kind of extends east into Wichita, Kansas City, St. Louis, Oklahoma City tomorrow, parts of Dallas on Sunday. Front kind of lays over the Great Lakes, back through the plains all weekend long, heavy rain for the Ohio Valley tomorrow, and that rain does push into the northeast by the end of Father's Day. David? All right, Rob, and happy Father's Day, Rob, from all of us here. Thanks, David. We move on to the other news tonight into the new video this evening involving actor Cuba Gooding Jr., who is fighting those allegations of groping a woman here in New York City. Well, tonight, here's surveillance video obtained by TMZ and what it shows. Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis again tonight. New surveillance video captures the moment that now has actor Cuba Gooding Jr. facing two misdemeanor charges accused of groping a woman in a New York bar Sunday night. TMZ obtaining this video, which allegedly shows the accuser sitting down next to Gooding and his girlfriend. Gooding appears to first put his hand on her thigh. A few seconds later, he appears to move it up near her chest. The actor is then seen pulling her hands to his lips. Another man then walks over. The Oscar-winning actor from Jerry Maguire, who also starred in The People vs. O.J. Simpson. Everybody thinks I'm guilty. Seen here handcuffed yesterday when he entered a plea of not guilty to charges of forcible touching and third-degree sex abuse. His lawyer claims it was the accuser who pursued Gooding. It was very clear and apparent that the lady who made these false charges was stalking Mr. Gooding. This lady continued to invade his private space until ultimately somebody, not Cuba, but somebody else had to tell her to please excuse herself. All right, Lindsay Davis back with us here tonight, and Cuba Gooding Jr. has maintained his innocence since these allegations broke. He certainly has. He's due back in court at the end of the month. If convicted, however, he could face up to a year behind bars, David. All right, Lindsay Davis with us again tonight. Always great to have you. And we turn next tonight to a remarkable and really awful picture from overseas tonight, the massive landslide sweeping cars off the road. This is in southeast China. Look at this. Days of heavy rain and flooding unleashing a wave of mud and water in Fujian province. At least one person was killed. Storms are being blamed tonight for more than 60 deaths. Thousands of homes were destroyed. Thousands of people have been evacuated. There, is, there are new warnings tonight after a series of stingray attacks. 15 people stung and now reports a dozen more in Southern California. And here's ABC's Adrian Bankert now. It's one of the most beautiful beaches in America. 
but tonight, lifeguards at Coronado Beach in San Diego are warning swimmers to watch out for stingrays. I was going out riding the waves with my boogie board, and then I was walking and just got stung. 13-year-old Phoenix Stofa, one of at least a dozen stung on Thursday after another 15 got stung earlier this week. It feels like fire, like my foot is on fire, and it hurts so bad. This is definitely some of the worst pain I felt. Rays are common in shallow water along the Southern California shoreline. They burrow in the sand when hunting prey. Warmer water means more prey, more people in the water, and more stingrays. But there is a way to protect yourself. But you keep your feet flat, and then as you walk out into the ocean and enjoy the day, you just kind of shuffle your feet and kick up that sand, and it scares them away, and it keeps you from getting stung. David, experts say to treat a sting with the hottest water you can stand to relieve the pain. At Coronado Beach, there are hot water stations at lifeguard stands. At L.A. County beaches like this one, wave down a lifeguard to be treated on scene. David? All right, Adrian, thank you. When we cut to the index and a mother and her four-year-old son escaping during a coyote attack in New Jersey, the mom pushing a stroller at Fairfield Recreational Park when she was bit on the ankle and the stroller was knocked over with the animal then biting the child. A police officer tracking and killing what they believe was the same coyote. That animal is now being tested for rabies. To that horrific road rage case, both drivers were killed in Davie, Florida. Authorities say Keith Byrne was apologizing to the driver of a BMW he had cut off when that man, identified as 22-year-old Andre Sinclair, pulled a gun. Byrne pulled his own weapon, and the two then exchanged fire. Byrne, a retired Marine and father of three, died at the scene. Sinclair, whose baby was in the car, later died as well. And an historic first tonight for the U.S. Naval War College, the Navy announcing today that Rear Admiral Shoshana Chatfield, a helicopter pilot who served in Afghanistan and heads a military command in Guam, will become the first female leader of the War College in Newport, Rhode Island, and we celebrate her. One Monday tonight here with Father's Day almost here. It's a bit of a tradition. I like to head out and ask the children what they think of Dad. A simple trip today outdoors to ask the children what they're doing this Sunday. Train Dylan, they tell me they're both seven. Are you guys twins? Yeah. You are? Wow, that's pretty cool. Do you like being twins? No. No? But that's not why we're here. Do you know what Sunday is? Yeah, yeah. Father's is, Day. Are you going to surprise them on Father's Day? Yeah. We're not ruining the surprise here. Then the little girls from Blessed Sacrament. What's the one word to describe your dad? Um, amazing. Amazing? Yeah, amazing. Um, cool. Cool? Funny. Funny. Nice. Nice? Fine. Kind. A couple of them telling me they plan to make breakfast. What's going to be in the breakfast? Uh, cupcakes. 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 Cupcakes for breakfast, Dad. Do you know what Sunday is? Yeah. What? Father's Day. And we asked one word. If you had one word to describe your dad, what would it be? They're kind. Kind? And they were off to work on their homemade card. And then the teenagers. Do you guys know what Sunday is? You're going to have to think really hard here. You're on, you're on the spot. One asking, is it an anniversary? Uh, anniversary of some, some sort? Anniversary of some sort? Well, yeah, it happens oh, every year. Isn't it a Father's Day? Thank you. Oh, Don't worry, Dad. They do care. In fact, Victoria put it this way. He deserves the whole world because he gave me the whole world. And to make up for that moment when they couldn't remember, these students from the special music school in New York offered this. Happy, happy, happy Father's Day! They saved themselves there. Happy Father's Day to all the dads and stepdads out there. And, of course, I hope to see you right back here on Monday. Good night.